This sermon is titled Purposes, Plans, Pursuits Part 2 Be enriched as you listen Last Sunday we started talking about purposes, plans and pursuits just to remind us that the God we serve He has a purpose for each of our lives and we need to work towards it. We need to plan and pursue God's purposes for our lives. So I want to quickly review a few things that we stated, some key points that we stated last Sunday and take this forward today. So just by way of review, we said last Sunday that God is a God of purpose, plan, and design. So God doesn't do things arbitrarily, randomly, you know, but He has a purpose and He is unfolding these things. He designed you and me for a purpose. So God has a purpose for your life individually. Each one of us sitting here, God has a purpose for you and God designed you for that purpose. So we saw last Sunday how God fashions each one of our hearts, are the very core of our being, the inner person. God fashions it like a potter working on clay. So God has shaped you. He has formed your inner person. Uh, he's, he's, he's designed you the way you are in order to fulfill the purpose that He has in mind for you and for me. Each one of us have been designed by God. And we also say that God reveals His purpose. So God is not hiding this away from us, but He reveals it. He says, I want you to know this is my purpose for your life. He reveals that. And if you, are, you and I are willing to listen, we can understand His purpose, and then we can pursue that purpose. So God reveals His purposes to us. And so as believers, our goal is to live for God's purpose. So put your right hand up and say this with me. My goal is to live for God's purpose. Let's say it one more time. My goal is to live for God's purpose. Right? That's, that's what we're here for, right? We're living here. Uh, we're here to live for the purpose of God. So we must, uh, each one of us must ask God to reveal and guide us into His purposes for our lives. So I want to encourage you. Make this a constant prayer. It's a continual thing. God, show me. God, lead me. God, guide me. I want to live for your purpose. I want to journey into everything you have in store for me. So God, lead me. Please guide me. You know, that's a con continual, constant prayer that we bring before God. So ask God to do that for you. And He's faithful. He will do it. And then we also said we must plan and pursue the fulfilling God of God's purposes for our life. So it's not going to happen automatically. We need to plan for it. We need to work towards it. We need to journey into it. And that's kind of the emphasis of these two messages, right? That to encourage you and me to plan and to pursue uh, the purpose of God for our lives. Last Sunday, towards the end of it, we very quickly addressed the question, is it right to plan? And uh, we, uh, we addressed that. We also in showed from Scripture the importance of planning, that the Scripture is actually teaching us. If, for instance, uh, Proverbs 4.26 the Bible says, ponder the path of your feet. Think about where you're going. Uh, we saw, uh, you know, from Proverbs 6, and 6 to 8, prepare for the future. The Bible says, look at the ant. It prepares for the future. Have foresight. Look in. Look ahead. Uh, plan ahead. Proverbs 22, verse 3. And plan with the help of the Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 1, 17 to 18. So we covered all of that last Sunday. Now, last Sunday out of the service, the, the second service, uh, a young person came, and then he asked me, he asked me the question, okay, you know, yes, I believe God has a purpose, but the big question is, how can I recognize that purpose? How can I understand that? And maybe some of us have that same question. So I want to point you back to that same book. You know, we have a little book, it's called Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. You can download it, the PDF, from the church website. Print copies will be available next Sunday. I was told it's not there today, so... Uh, it'll be the next Sunday. Now, in that book, we mention nine signposts that God uses to guide us in His life. 
nine signposts. You know, when you're making a journey, you look out for the sign. You know, where, where's the sign? How do I get to the airport? Or how do I go to the city? Whatever. You look for the signs and it gives you direction. So there are nine signposts that God uses in our lives. And those are listed in the book. So I encourage you to pick it up. And at any season, any point in life, God would use any combination of these signposts to say, this is the way, walk in it. Right? So we have to become familiar with the signposts of God. Oh, that's God's sign there. God's sign there. He's telling me, go this way. I follow Him. Right? So we're not dealing with those signposts per se, but there are those signposts that, that we know from Scripture God uses. What we're emphasizing in these two sermons is that we need to plan and pursue the purpose of God. That's kind of what we're emphasizing. But the question that was asked was a very valid question. Now, uh, last Sunday, we gave a simple example of how to work on a life plan. Uh, we, uh, we just picked the example of a young person, maybe he's just finishing college, and so he's looking ahead five to eight, eight to 10 years, once he finishes, what will he do next? And we give a very basic, simple example. But I want to expand that life plan to uh, another stage in life. Many of us here are married, we have family, children. The responsibilities are much more. They're greater, a lot more to take care of. How do I work a life plan when I'm in that stage of life? I'm no longer a student, I'm here. I've got a lot more things to address and be responsible for. So I just want to extend what we spoke last Sunday, explain it, and encourage you to do it, and then we will move forward from there. So once again, uh, it's important to have a purpose. So let's say this, this young man, you know, who, who we, last Sunday we said, he, you know, while in college he felt the purpose is to be a tech entrepreneur, start a com you know, company, go forward. So let's say he's come into that, and now that same purpose is redefined, or it is, it is being uh, restated in this manner, in a different stage of his life, that now that he has started that, he's, he's, you know, he's in his business, now the purpose is restated to, I, to live the kingdom life in this space as a tech entrepreneur or uh, in tech and business. So the purpose, is, the purpose has been restated. Demonstrate kingdom living. But now, in this stage of life, let's say, you know, it's between ages 30 to 35. Let's say, that in that stage, how do we work out a life plan? So, age 30 to 35, purpose. Demonstrate kingdom living. I feel that's what God wants me to do. He wants me to be here in this space, and I need my life to become an example to people how to be a believer, how to be a kingdom person in this space of tech and business. So that becomes a purpose. Now, like we said last Sunday, you look at life in stages or seasons or phases. So we're looking at this particular stage, ages 30 to 35. Everybody is with me so far? Yes? Okay. So this is a stage of, of life you're looking at. And what you and I must do is listen to God and say, God, in this stage of my life, what should be the plan? What should be the focus? And God will speak to you. He will put it in your heart. You know, for instance, in 2010, when I was working on, and I was doing this thing, this life plan, for each stage, I just... Listen to what God would put in my heart, and I put down. That's what I feel. God, I, I, that's the focus of that stage of my life. And today, I'm, I'm seeing those things happen. But I wrote them down in 2010, more than 10 years ago. God can show you things ahead of time. That's what the whole, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will do. He will show you things to come. John 16, verse 13. He will show you things to come. You believe God can show you things to come? He can put it in your heart so that you can be prepared. He can get you ready for what is to come. But you and I must be willing to listen. And so as you listen, for various stages, he will say, look, that's be the focus. That's what you need to go after. So let's say this person 
says he feels in his heart that this is a growth stage. God says, you know, focus on growing to the next level. So he puts his plan, plan there. It is to grow to the next level in all areas. Go to the next level. Become, a, become better in all areas. So now you need to pursue that. It's not going to happen just because you wrote it down. You need to pursue. How are you going to pursue? All right? So you break it down further. What are the areas of life that I need to step up in? And here I've mentioned seven. You may look at it differently. You may look at it four or five or six or maybe more. But seven areas, for instance, one, spiritual life. Second, personal life. Third, family. Fourth, children. Fifth, finances. Sixth, professional life. Seventh, Christian ministry. So these are the areas of my life where I need to step up to the next level in that stage between 30 to 35. All with me so far? Okay. Now, for each of these seven areas, list at least three things you will do to pursue stepping up to the next level. So in your personal, in your spiritual life, a, B, C. Three things. What can you do? And this will vary for each one of us. Maybe for this person, he will say, now, A, read my Bible every day. Very important. But if you do that, it's going to help you step up in your spiritual life. Maybe he'll put B, spend at least, you know, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever time. Spend time in prayer every day. You know, that's another action item he will put down. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pursue because I want to step up spiritually. And he may add one more. Maybe read good Christian books or listen to good sermons, whatever. But he's got three things that he can do in that stage of his life to move to the next level. Concerning his personal life. Now, personal life could be things that he's personally interested in. Maybe it has to do with, could be taking care of his health, uh, other things. So he said, one, two, three. These are three things I will do to go up to the next level in my personal life. Number three, for the family. So now you're responsible for your family. So what can you do uh, to be better? So he might write, say, A, B, C. You know, be a better husband to my wife. B, be a better father for my children. So maybe at this stage he has, you know, two kids, ages three and five or something, you know, <laughs> something like that. So he says, be a better father to my kids. Uh, for the family, see, do some, uh, the third, uh, third action item, maybe get my family together for prayer every day. So how, what can I do to make my family better? Are you with me? So I remember in my Excel sheet, I had be a better husband. <laughs> I need to become a better husband. Yeah, I need to work on that. So I put it down. Be a better father to my children. Put it down. Because I need to work on it in that in the area of family. I want things to go up uh, there. So put it down. You know? Intentionally work on those things. Uh, for your children. So what can you do? How can you, you know, uh, what, what would you do in that stage of your life? You know, spend time with them. Get to know them better. Get to know, you know, what are their strengths. See, if you... The Bible says that children are like arrows. Arrows have to be aimed and released. Not close your eyes and shoot. God, take them wherever you want. <laughs> no. You've got to aim and shoot. So children are like arrows and in your hand as parents. So parents, you've got to aim them and shoot them, release them. So you need to understand, you know, two kids can be born the same family, but they're very different. Very different. So you need to understand each child. What are their strengths? What are their passions? What are their inclinations? Understand them so that then you as a parent can aim and release them correctly. Are you with me? So you'll put down for children. Get to under, spend more time with them. Understand how they're being designed. Uh, Learn, encourage them, you know, at a certain stage, maybe. You know, encourage them in, in things they are good at. You know, so you put those three things up. Finances, same thing. You know, plan for your money. What are you going to do with your money? How are you going to save? How are you going to invest? How are you going to cause the money to multiply? Plan it. So is it right to plan? Jesus said, don't lay up treasures here on earth. 
because where moth and rust, they are all, you know, he said, lay the treasures up in heaven. True. The Bible says it. There's a context. You need to understand it. But the same Bible says that a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Both are in the Bible. So if you're going to leave an inheritance to your grandchildren, you better start saving now. Amen? Not many amens on that. <laughs> but it's in the Bible, right? It's the same Bible. So you've got to understand it all in context. And, and, the, and so in order, if you're going to be a good person who's going to leave an inheritance for your children's children, well, have a plan. What are you going to do? How are you going to do it? How are you going to, you know, when children grow up at some stage, you have to send them to college. And, uh, you know, well, uh, sometimes you spend more on their uh, basic education <laughs> before you spend more on college. So it, all of that costs money. How are you going to do it? Well, plan for your finances. For your professional life, you know, um, uh, depending on the industry, of course, that you're working on, things are changing so quickly. So even for your professional life, how do you keep your skills up to date? How can you grow professionally? Maybe you need to, you know, if you decide to go into management, you need to learn some things in that direction, take some courses or you know, develop your skills or keep reading or keep listening to podcasts, the great ways to learn these days. And so you have a plan. Professionally, I need to be on the cutting edge. How are you going to do it? Or if you're in the tech area, how, you know, technology is changing so much. Globally, companies are repositioning themselves to move in a different direction. Are you staying in trend? Are you moving in that direction? Keep yourself up to date. So for your professional life, you'll have A, B, C. These are three things I'm going to do to step up for next level. And then Christian ministry, serve in church, volunteer, maybe start a life group, maybe go on missions, something. How are you going to serve God? With me so far? So this is how you can set up a life plan. Now, we've just talked about one stage, a five-year period. You can extend this to the next five years and extend it to another five years. However far you're comfortable going, do it and put it down. Listen to God put it down. Now, we understand that, you know, as, as we listen to God, we may have only certain amount of light at any point. We're not seeing everything perfectly. But according to what you understand at that time, you write it down. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4 and verse 18, that the path of the righteous is like the sun that rises up to the noonday. It gets brighter and brighter. So as you keep journeying, it's going to get brighter and brighter. Things are going to become clearer. So you can always come back and update this and say, yeah, now I have, a more, I have more clarity in, in that stage of my life. I have more clarity. God has given me a little bit more understanding or a little bit more details on what I should be doing. So you can always come back and update it. Because as we journey with God, things are going to get brighter and brighter. So this is not set in stone. It's something you're, as you're journeying with God, you can always keep updating this and you walk with God. So I just want to leave that there. This is not a commandment, it's just a sharing of something you can do practically to have a life plan and move towards fulfilling God's purpose. What I want to do now is to talk about pursuing the purpose of God, which means when God has put certain things in your heart, remember it's not going to happen automatically. We need to pursue. We need to go after that. So I want to spend some time talking to us about that. Look at the Lord Jesus. Look at his life. And look at some of the things he said. And we can quickly understand that he was living with purpose. For instance, in Mark chapter 1, verse 38, you know, the, the, the disciples come to Jesus and say, Hey, Lord, everybody's looking for you. They all want to come and listen to you one more time, one more sermon. You know, preachers love that. People are coming back, they want one more sermon. But you know what Jesus says? He says, let's go to the other cities because for this purpose I have been sent. Now he's saying, let's go to Chennai, let's go to Mumbai, let's go to Hyderabad, let's go to Calcutta, let's go to Delhi, let's keep moving because this is God's purpose. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, 
Think about it. He, Jesus is saying, for this purpose I have been sent. I mean, I've been sent. This is my purpose in this right now. I have to go to all these cities. I have to be moving. I have to go and proclaim the kingdom in all these other cities. So, as an itinerant preacher, moving from city to city, he wasn't doing it just to become famous. He was doing it because he was because of the purpose of the Father in that season. This is the purpose. For this purpose, I'm here. A little later on in John 12, when Jesus is approaching the cross, you can imagine all the thoughts and emotions going through his mind. And so he says there in John 12, verse 27, he says, you know, now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? It's a question mark. I mean, should I pray like this? Father, save me? Obviously, the answer that's implied there is no. You can't, don't, don't pray like that. What, is, what does Jesus say? But for this purpose, I came to this hour. It means I know what is the purpose in this moment of my life. I know what purpose God has, the Father has. He was living with the sense of purpose and he was pursuing that purpose. Are you all with me? So, Jesus moved with that purpose. Even though emotionally at that time it was very difficult. He says, my soul is troubled because he knows what he's going to get into. A challenge, a difficulty, a difficult thing he's going to take on. My soul is troubled, but I've got to do it for this purpose. I've been sent. So when you know the purpose of God, you can press through any challenge in life. There will be challenges, there will be difficulties, but you know your purpose. Think about the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3 and verse 12, again a very well-known scripture. Paul said, not that I've already attained or I'm already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. I'm pressing on. I want to lay a hold of that for which, that purpose for which Jesus laid a hold of me. I say, I'm pressing forward because I want to lay a hold of that purpose. So let's all say this together. Put your right hand up. Say this with me. I want to lay a hold of that purpose for which Jesus laid a hold of me. I want to lay a hold of that purpose for which Jesus laid a hold of me. Amen. When Jesus laid a hold of your life, He laid a hold of you, He got a hold of you, He got a grip on you for a purpose. Now, it's your turn, my turn to say, God, I want to lay a hold of that purpose with which you laid a hold of me. I want to pursue that. I want to live for that. Now, I wanted to share this thought with you. That in the Bible, we find several paradoxical statements. Paradoxical, paradox simply means two opposites, but both are true. They're opposites, but they're true. Both are true. One of these paradoxical statements concerning the Christian life is that as believers, we are both warriors and children. You are a warrior, but you're also a child. They're paradoxical because the, what you do as a warrior is in complete contrast to what we do as a child. But at any given time, both these are true in the life of a believer. For instance, in Mark chapter 10, verse 15, Jesus said, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, you cannot enter. So in order to enter, in order to experience the kingdom, you have to receive it like a child. Child doesn't do anything, just receives. It doesn't look to the father, you know, daddy, how much money you want for this chocolate? <laughs> no, nothing, just receives the chocolate. Maybe ask, give me one more. Just receives. So Jesus said, you have to receive the kingdom like a child. 
if you want to get in, you want to experience the kingdom, receive it like a child. But Jesus also said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, he said, from the days of John the Baptist till now, that means it's, this started from John the Baptist, it's going on now, the kingdom of heaven is experiencing violence and the violent take it by force. Or Luke puts it like this, Luke 16, 16, he says, people are pressing in to it. So look, now he's talking about something different. He says, if you want to enter in the kingdom, you have to be militant, you have to be like a warrior. So one side he said, you have to be like a child, but he says now, you have to be militant, you have to be like a warrior. And both are true. So you and I must understand that as we are pursuing the things of God's kingdom, there are times we just say, Father, I'm just going to receive like a child. You are doing everything. I'm just receiving like a child. But there are also times when you say, Father, I know this is your purpose and I'm going to press into it. I'm going to fight for it like a warrior because there is the world, the flesh, and the devil that are trying to keep us out of the kingdom. So we got to press in, got to fight and say, no, that is for me. That's kingdom that's kept for me. I'm pressing in to it. Are you listening? Both are true. So in pursuing the purposes of God for your life, there are times you just say, God, please handle it. I'll just receive it. But there are times you are going to say, Lord, I'm going to fight for this. It's my right. It's my kingdom blessing. I'm going to press into it. I'm going to take it by force. If there's anything of the flesh, of the world, of the devil, you've got to deal with it with force. Amen? You've got to be violent. You've got to be militant. Don't let those things stop you from having what is yours in the kingdom. And then there are times you just say, God, this is beyond me. I'll be like a child. You carry me through this. Amen? Both are true. As we per pursue the purpose of God for our lives. So, I want to talk a little bit about that before we close this morning. About as we pursue the purpose of God, it really is a great adventure. So I just like to call it the great adventure of pursuing the purposes of God. Because while we get a sense of His purpose, we've done our plan, we're saying, I'm going to work towards the plan, all that is nice, there's so many things we don't know. So many things outside our control. So many things we cannot orchestrate ourselves. And so it becomes this great adventure to journey with God into seeing His purposes fulfilled for our lives. And I want to talk about these four variables or four factors that can, you know, affect this journey in, in, in different ways. One is our own personal decisions. Two is people around us. Three, there is Satan, the devil. And then for there are situations. We don't control all of these things. So talk about the personal. Sometimes we make mistakes. It's our thing, you know, our fault. Maybe I didn't do something I was supposed to do. Maybe I didn't work hard enough. Maybe I didn't make the sacrifice I was supposed to make. Maybe, you know, I made mistakes. I made a wrong choice, a wrong decision, whatever. Something I did wrong. That's personal. I need to take responsibility for it. Sometimes it's people. There are people who come alongside us and they encourage us, they support us. But sometimes there are people who hinder us, they discourage us, they, they may not believe in us, they may whatever. You know, we've got to deal with that. And then there's the devil. He's going to try to do his thing to keep us away from the purpose of God. And then there are situations beyond our control, outside our control, things that happen. And so we've got to 
navigate through all of these things in life. Are you with me? And what I want to encourage you and me to do is, yes, there are these things, but our determined determination is, I'm going to stay with the purpose of God for my life. I'm not going to let any of these things take me away from the purpose of God. I'll just mention a few things here. Number one would be distractions. Distractions can come in so many forms. Sometimes it's the enemy, and sometimes it may be even well-meaning people who would make suggestions, but those suggestions could be distractions. Now, I remember, you know, this was back in 1993 when I wrote down saying, look, I'm going to go back to India, and I'm going to, you know, I believe this is God's call to start the church, do this, this. I wrote it down. But there were well-meaning people, a good pastor, he said, you know, I said, you want to go to India? You be here in America. You just travel, do ministry, and come back. It's easy. Yeah, it's okay for somebody else. It's not okay for me. No. Other, and all these are well-meaning people. Somebody else came and said, Ashish, we are launching a Bible college in one of the Pacific Islands. Very relaxed place. Bible college, Christian school. You can run it for us. Uh, there'll be teachers coming in from different parts of the world. So you'll get to meet lots of people. It's very calm place. Very nice. It's a nice thing. It may be okay for somebody else. Not okay for me. For me, I've got to go to Namauru, Bengaluru. <laughs> I've got to go there. I've got to be there. That's where I have to go. Amen? So when you know the purpose of God, when you have it down, you can recognize distractions. No. These are good. It may be good for somebody else. Not good for me. Because I know my purpose. Are you listening? So be careful of distractions. Now, Distractions are broken focus. If you lose focus, you get distracted. Distractions are a waste of time and resources because you then put your resources somewhere else and so staying uh, focused on the purpose of God. So be careful of distractions. Sometimes, you know, there could be uh, mistakes we make and none of us are perfect, so the reality is all of us will make mistakes. Some of the mistakes will be small. Some mistakes will have big consequences. We'll all make mistakes. But I I always tell myself, and I also want to share this, remind us, you know, God is bigger than our mistakes. Amen? God is bigger. Now, that is not an encouragement to make mistakes. What I'm saying is, if and when we make mistakes, go back to God and say, God, I messed up. I did something I'm not supposed to do. I did it wrong. I'm putting it in your hands, God. Could you please fix it for me? You know, and there is no problem that is too complex for God. You know, He can fix it. He can sort it out. But we need to repent, realize I made a mistake. I need to go to God. Lord, please fix it. Let's get this together. And He will do it. So the fact is, in our journey towards the purpose of God, we may make mistakes, but we need to repent Go before God, put it in His hands, He'll straighten things out. People, we must learn to work with people uh, whom God has put alongside us. There will be people who are there, who are there to bless us. There will be people uh, who may sometimes uh, hinder us, you know. And sometimes when I look back in life's journey, uh, I'm so thankful for the different people whom God brought. And I, I remember way back in college, uh, I was second year engineering college. This was during the bachelor's. I was studying in Manipal at that time, doing my bachelor's. And, you know, just getting ministry started in that place. Um, in those days, there was not much happening in Manipal. Today, Manipal is very different. But those days, not much was happening. Just getting ministry started, doing a little Bible study, and trying to, you know, uh, with whatever money parents would send, save some money. You know, use, because they send every month, they used to send me, I think, 800 rupees, pay mess bill, pay this thing. Manage. I used to manage. But I needed extra money because if I want to do ministry, I have to rent the hall. If I had to rent the hall, I had to pay money. So I'd somehow, you know, try to stretch that money so I can have extra money to rent the hall to do ministry. 
And I remember there was a friend who was in my, he was two years my senior. I, I wasn't asking people for money. We were just trying to do ministry on the campus. And this friend came. He said, he gave me an envelope. I said, this is some money to do the ministry. I was, that was the first time on campus somebody gave me money. I never asked. I don't know wh- how God and why God put it in his heart. But he came. I said, ministry. And we started. We were able to rent the hall, get ministry started. And then, you know, slowly things happen. So God sends people like that. Amen? And he puts it in their heart. Do something. Help. Come alongside. And then work goes on. So there are people whom God will send. And then sometimes people may do things against us. Just let that, you know, just leave them to God. There could be unexpected situations. Things happen. We never anticipated. We didn't anticipate. It happens. Okay. In every situation, in challenges, in unexpected situations, you are more than a conqueror. That's the attitude. Yes, there will be challenges in life. Yes, there will be unexpected situations. But this is how you face it. God always causes me to triumph in Christ. The game is over before the game starts. The result is God will cause me to triumph. So it doesn't matter what the challenge, it doesn't matter what the unexpected situation. Yeah, it might take me by surprise. It may demand more strength. But you always face it with this attitude. God will cause me to triumph. Because it's in the word of God. He always causes you triumph. So you face those challenges. You face those unexpected situations. Like we heard today, you know, as, a, as somebody who reigns in life, who rules in life. And then there will be God-appointed surprises. Worship team, please come. There will be God-appointed surprises. You know, God will say, hello, i like to surprise you. Something wonderful happening. And you say, God, thank you. I know I don't deserve this. But thank you, God. It's a joy. It's an honor to be on this great adventure to fulfill the purpose of God. So God will surprise. God will do some amazing things. You know, you say, God, I didn't think you would do this. I mean, I didn't even know you would do it. But thank you. It's an honor to serve God. Amen. The God will bring all these things. So what am I saying? We get a sense of God's purpose. Do the best you can to listen to God, plan, and pursue. Do the best. And we know there are so many things in life that are beyond us. Situations, what the enemy will try to do, all those things. But in everything, stay focused on the purpose of God. I'm living for that purpose. Be determined to go after the purpose. Don't let anything discourage you. Don't let anything distract you, divert you. Stay focused. Keep pressing. There are times you have to just receive like a child. God, thank you. There are times you have to fight like a warrior. I'm going to press in. Because I know this is what my father wants for me. I'm not going to give up. No devil, no man, nothing in this world can stop you from fulfilling the purpose of God. Because God is on your side. God is on your side. Who can stop you? I want to just close by reminding us of Romans 8, verse 28. We all are familiar with the scripture. The apostle Paul wrote, He said, we know. Say this with me. I know. Say it like you really know it. I know. (laughs) All things work together for my good. Because I love God. And I'm called for His purpose. 
Amen. You love God. You are called for His purpose. So everything is working for your good. To move you forward in the purpose of God. Do we understand everything? No, we don't. But that's what faith is. We walk by faith. Even when we don't understand, even when we can't figure it out, that's okay. We are living by what we know. God's put it in my heart to pursue this. I'll pursue it. Do I understand everything? No. But I walk by faith. Knowing that everything is working together for good. Because I love God and I'm called for His purpose. You love God, you're called for His purpose. Amen. Let's rise to our feet, please. So, if you would like to try to do a, work on a life plan, I encourage you to do that. So you at least have a sense of direction. See, young people, this is so important. Because in 1993, when I wrote down, I have to go to Bangalore, it automatically meant I have to marry somebody who's willing to come to Bangalore. Everybody else automatically ruled out. So when you know God's purpose, it helps you make decisions. Whether it's finding your life partner, whether so many things, it helps you. So I encourage you, work on a life plan. Put it down. Listen to God. And then make this great adventure. Make this great adventure. Journey with God. Because we don't know everything, but each step of the way, is a great adventure with God. There'll be some mountains you have to conquer. There'll be some rivers you have to cross. And there'll be some giants you have to knock out. They're all part of the fun. Amen? It's part of that journey to see the purpose of God fulfilled. If somebody asks you, what are you living for? Without any hesitation, you and I, I'm living for the purpose of God. I'm living for God's purpose. I'm here for that one reason. You are here for that one reason, for God's purpose for your life. That's what motivates you. That's what keeps you burning, keeps you going. God has a purpose. Amen? A few people said amen. 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 You're living for God's purpose. Take some time to just look to God. Tell Him, God, I'm, I'm here for you. Your purpose, God. You work in my life. Where I need to fight, I will fight. Where I need to receive like a child, I receive like a child. I'm journeying with you. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, and every breath that I take, every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way, sing Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you alone, and every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake, oh God, may I live for you, Lord, to have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, my all, I 
give you my soul I live for you Every stage, every season Free breath that I take Every moment I'm awake Oh God, Lord have Be it, be it in a quiet pasture gentle stream the shepherd of my soul is by my side should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my guide be it in a quiet pasture be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream the shepherd of my soul is by my side should I face a mighty mountain or a valley dark and deep the shepherd of my soul will be my God Lord I give you my heart I give you my soul I live for you alone in every breath that I take. Every moment yes, oh God. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone and every breath that I take every moment I'm away Lord have your way in me Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that the purpose of God for each one of our lives will come forth, Lord. That we will live for the purposes of God for our lives. That we will be able to direct our homes, our families into your purposes. That we'll be able to nurture our children into the purposes you have for their lives. That God, everything about our lives will be aligned to your purpose. What you want done here on earth. I pray you'll speak to each one, Lord. May each one, young, those who are further along in life's journey, each one live for your purposes doing your will in whatever season whichever season of life we are in may we carry out your purpose Father I pray that you will speak to our hearts give us dreams give us visions inspire us inside Lord by your Holy Spirit each one God stirring up the call stirring up the purpose of God in each of us help us to look beyond the mundane beyond the everyday things and help us to see your heavenly calling your heavenly purpose and help us to pursue that Father each one of us. And Father, I pray that every gift, every skill, every talent, every resource be consecrated to you. Be consecrated for your purposes. That if it is spent, let it be spent for the kingdom. 
Let it be used for your kingdom. Whatever you've entrusted each one, Lord. The grace that you've placed on our lives, the opportunities you've given us, the positions you've placed us in, let it all count for your kingdom. Let it matter for your kingdom. Wherever you've placed us. Let your kingdom come through each of our lives. Let your kingdom come. Thank you, O God. You know, sometimes sickness and disease may try to stop us. You know, they try to cripple us and hinder us. But let's pray that God will remove sickness and disease because He He's the healer, He's the deliverer. We are not subject to the oppression of the enemy. So just join with me in prayer. If you are fighting sickness, disease, we all have to contend against it, but we can pray. And God Father, even now, we stand against sickness and disease, in whatever form, whether it's physical or emotional. Every attempt of the enemy to hinder the purpose of God, to come against us, to stop us from advancing. In the name of Jesus, we reject sickness, we reject disease, because the Bible says, Jesus took our sicknesses. Jesus took our diseases and by his stripes we were healed. We declare that each one will live out the full course of our lives. We will fulfill the purpose of God for our lives. We stand against every work of the enemy. Trying to oppose or hinder, whether it's through people, whether it's through circumstances. We crush these under our feet. Let every hindrance and every barrier raised by the enemy be torn down, taken out of the way, so that we as the people of God can but once can move forward in what God has called us to do. Father, we thank you that we reign in life through Jesus Christ. We overcome the enemy through Jesus Christ. And so let each one, Lord, see that good hand of God upon their lives, causing them to prosper, causing them to thrive in the purposes of God. Thank you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship, strengthening of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us always. In Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen. 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 Thank you for listening. We trust this message was a blessing to you. For more free resources, including sermons, sermon notes, and books, please visit apcwo.org. For information on APC Bible College in Bangalore, visit apcbiblecollege.org. Do remember to download the All People's Church Bangalore app from the Apple or Google Play Store.